Yes, this is an expensive project, this one. You see, here is my old Martin Logan um, Dynamo 300 subwoofer. And there is my new Martin Logan Dynamo 300, Dynamo 300 subwoofer. And here, sitting atop it, sitting atop both of them, in fact, is a 90 by 90 extruded aluminum Misumi. Oh, God, hit piece. With the smaller, quote unquote, smaller brackets for top and bottom using the blued high visibility McMaster car hardware. And basically, I'm building speaker stands. And <laughs> Zeos got to do it different and better than everybody else. So, I'm going to take my little ball, Sons of Bees, the Zisolators, and now I'm going to mount that there. Now, I may drill a hole and fill this with sand if I think it's worthwhile. If I... I mean, it's a hollow metal tube, so it's kind of like a resonance thing, but it can be fixed. I I just pour hot glue down, make sure there's a seal, and then I would just fill it. And this thing is heavy already. My only concern with that is, obviously, I'm not concerned about the subwoofer. The subwoofer is solid, but you know, I want to make sure the weight stays at the bottom. And uh, then I've got to actually secure my balls because right now we're just sitting on top. The glue I put on never held, so. Yeah, now I've got to do this. Let's see if I can do this. This is going to be fun for you people on the internet. Force hammer! By the way, the dining room table is absolutely the way to do this. Okay. I'm going to need my scale. Not to weigh it. The one that measures things. So what I'm going to just do is mark out where I'm drilling. Because I have more... These are the short ones. You'll notice I didn't have any lock washers or washers on these because I have a ton of these short ones and they will only work if I don't do any of that. I also put thread locker all around because since I don't have a lock washer, I do not want these rattling loose. I get my scale. Where my scale at? Where my scale? God damn it! There it is. There's my battery charger and K7XXs and shoes. Those aren't my shoes. Whose shoes are they? I'm also gonna need a blue magic marker. No, no refrigerator pictures. Keep them out. Keep them out. Let's see which one did I use? I think I used this one yesterday. So what am I looking at? 42 to the end of the thing, and 30, okay, it's gotta move. Should not have dumped these here. That's just video stuff happening. Must keep in mind there is a giant above my head. Do not. 36, this one's a 38. Let's go to 37. There we go, 37. 30, almost 7. It's about like micro, microts of distance. Gently rotate. And now we're going at... Eight, oh, 7.5 actually. And that's 6.5, so it's got to come over. Right. Now looking at just above 7. I'm just counting, it doesn't actually measure. As long as they match, it doesn't matter. Just a below seven. Just above seven. Just below seven. Just above seven. This is this is irrelevant conversation because the amount that I'm fussing over is so small. You want a good kitchen table for this, by the way. This particular project. 37. 37. All right. Straight up and down. I'm basically drawing a circle around where I'm going to drill. I did this on the subwoofers itself last night, and I was just, I should have filmed this, and I was just, I didn't give a shit. 
if people don't need to see everything. And I just threaded straight into the wood of the subwoofer. I was going to pull the driver out and I was going to get special longer bolts and, and do it, but it, the bolts wouldn't have matched. It wouldn't, there would have been two different types here and it would have cost me more. And I already had these. And I said, you know what? I took my bolt. I took a spare piece of wood. I tried several different holes within like 60 fourths of an inch of each other. And the one that I was tight enough to thread into, I drilled. And then I just hand cranked every one of these into the wood itself. So there's no, this is just thread, actually machine thread into wood, which, you know, I guess as long as I've got eight of them, it's fine. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to machine thread into cutting board plastic. Oh, lollipop, lollipop. Oh my God, lollipop, lollipop. <sighs> Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Uh, I would also like to somehow integrate a system to balance this, which is going to involve doing something with the bottom. I mean, it's just black box. I could just dress it up, maybe some wings, like a... I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know. I'm... Am I going to hit any balls? No. Take a check. Close there, but I don't think I'm gonna hit. All right. I'm gonna get my drill. I'm gonna drill these out, and then I'll show you cranking them down. I've drilled out, and the actual drill bit size I needed for these, because these are M8, so they're eight millimeter uh, thread. Uh, these drill bit size was uh, 17 sixty-fourths. And they will, here, here's my test piece of wood. I should have tested into plastic, but you know, it just threads pretty much in there. But to make it starting easier, to make it easier to start, I've taken, here's a drill bit that's 516, so it's bigger than that. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the drill in reverse, because you don't want to, I'm going to basically just hone out the very, very top lip so that it matches this and it could start, get in there a little bit and start easier. If I go forward, there's a very, very good chance since I'm cutting such a small thin wall, it'll just rip right through the hole. So in reverse, it'll just do this. I just wanted to do that. Give a little pressure. It's just, it's just giving you a little bit more to grab onto. There we go. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. Of course, now I've got to clear out what I've just pushed down into the hole. There you go. This is plastic, not wood. Done. Okay. So now I shouldn't have to clean these up, but I may I may just get a little bit of a uh, thing going here. There we go. And I can get about three turns, and then it's just too hard to. Uh, it's crooked as hell. Now, I wanted to worry about being crooked because that bracket's real thick. Anyways, so. Or is that going to stick up? Oh, barely even any. Okay. Attaching it to that verb. <clears throat> Footballer! By the way, extensions are your friend. I let you put the tool comfortably anywhere. And then... clutch on this. I guess that wasn't locked. How would it not be locked? Huh. Uh, 
You'll also notice, and I don't have to use any lock tight on this because if you ever buy a locking nut, you look at it, it's literally just got a piece of this plastic ring in it that locks it in place. So the fact that this is entirely made of that makes it a locking platform itself. So, again, I don't have the balls on there yet. Now, you're gonna look at this and go, God, Zeos, isn't that really tall? And, uh, yes, Jimmy, yes, it fucking is. And there's a reason for that, and I'm gonna do an entire video, now that I've got these set up, I'm gonna do an entire video on a subject that I've invented called height dominance. And I'm probably gonna do something crazy with the way this hooks up, because the way I had it hooked up before is here's my amplifier lines coming into the speaker, and then... I went to the straight to the five-way binding post with this wire, and this wire was going and going down here, and it shared across, and that allowed me to just run direct mode, powering the speakers, and then the subwoofers just came in, and it was these cut off naturally at 70, and I would just adjust the frequency cutoff. So there's no actual uh, low-pass filter on it, but it's very possible to do anything I like with it now. That isn't even like attached to anything. That's just. And also keep in mind these are massively giant speakers. So if I get a normal size set of speakers like these Martin Logans and put them up here, they're gonna end like a vat. But you know where that is? You know where that is? That's five eighths up the screen height of my projection screen. Which is where things need to go. God, that's giant! Don't leave me. Look around. Now I feel special. <laughs>